Okay, so what we're going to look at now is something called the motor principle. In the previous little mini investigation, what you noticed was that if you have a current carrying conductor uh, that's placed or located near an external magnetic field, so the key is that you have to have some sort of conductor that's carrying electricity, and if it's located near an external magnetic field, then what ends up happening is the two fields interact with each other. So you have the one that's electromagnetic and one that's a permanent, or it doesn't necessarily need to be permanent, but it, it has to be external to whatever it is that you're placing over top of it or near it. Uh, there's a, a force that's experienced. And that force is because the, if you recall from before, the magnetic field lines cannot cross. So if you have magnetic field lines being created from this current carrying conductor and you have external magnetic field lines, then what happens is those field lines can't cross. So you end up with a force. Now that force can be either attractive or repulsive, and it's always perpendicular to both itself and the external magnetic field. That's the, the direction of the force that we'll, it will experience. So in the mini investigation video that you watched, you would have seen that running the current in one direction created a, an electromagnet in a coil, and that if it was the, um, if the field lines were drawn towards each other, it was attracted and they would, they would stick to each other, or if it was repulsive, they would repel from each other. So what we're going to look at now is just a very simple sort of the right hand rule motor for the motor principle. And so basically, uh, you can see over here, when electricity is turned on, current flows through the wire, the wire will experience a force causing it to move in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. So a couple of things we're going to look at, first of all, in this case, for the right hand rule for the motor principle, your thumb is going to represent the current I. So that is the current. And it has directionality and B is the magnetic field. And that is the direction of the magnetic field. And that's going from north to south. And um, right, I wrote B field, you can write it down as magnetic field. Okay. And this arrow that's pointing is your palm and it's pointing perpendicular. So if you can imagine just holding your hand out and your fingers are pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, your eye is the direction of the current. The palm is pointing perpendicular, uh, is pointing in the direction of the force. And how we label that is F with a vector showing that it also has directionality. Remember the B with the vector means it has directionality. The F with the vector means it has direction as well. So again, um, the fingers point in direction of magnetic field. The palm points in the direction of force. Okay. And the thumb points in the direction of the current. Okay, so now let's take a look at what this might look like. Um, uh, when we, uh, like why that happens in which direction it points to in general. So we're gonna consider the situations below. There's an external magnetic field, that's the south, north, south, north, uh, and a current carrying conductor in the middle of it. The flow, the current is flowing out of the page. Uh, so you can imagine a wire here and the, we're going to draw the magnetic fields on the external magnetic, permanent magnets and the magnetic field produced around the current carrying conductor. And we're going to see which way the force would actually uh, be experienced in this case. Now, I'm going to do a few things here just to help you kind of visualize this. What I'm kind of setting up here is in three dimensions, I guess you could look at it as something like this i it, what, what it is really is there's a wire like 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 this and there's two magnets that are sort of set up maybe on a table or something like this and so what you what you're actually envisioning is something like this so there's there's these magnets north north and south north and south like this and they're maybe on a table and there's a wire in between them now, what we're doing is we're looking from the top down, okay? So we're looking like in a plane that's sort of along this line here, 
like this. And so what we see is the cross section. If you see my pen down here, we're looking at top down in this direction. So this is the way our eyeball is, is looking in that direction like that. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of the situation. Now in this case here, you see this little X that's telling us that the current is flowing down in this direction. And, uh, and that's the situation right here. So now let's take a look at what's happening for this next part. What we're going to look at is the, the magnetic field, uh, around the, uh, this current carrying conductor right here. So I'm going to do that in, uh, I'll do this orange color here. So what we're going to say is that if I draw, let's just draw two circles, maybe. So when there's electricity flowing through this wire, in this case, down this wire, you're going to see that if I use the right hand rule, it is going to be going in this direction here, in this direction here, like that, and like that. So that's the directionality of the magnetic field that's produced by the current carrying conductor. But now look, there's an external field here. There's an external magnet. And so with the external magnet, we know that magnetic fields uh, go north to south like this. Now I'm not going to draw all of them because it would take forever. Um, but these magnetic fields go north to south, and that's not quite right, and south to north inside. So what we can draw is if we just ignore those, right, because we know there's the magnetic fields everywhere. They're, they're all over here and we've drawn them before. But what we can see now is that the magnet, it would try to go from north right over to south because we know it would draw a bridge between the two of them. And that bridge, that bridge between the two of them would then tell us um, what it would look like. But as it's moving towards it, it says, oh wait, there's a magnetic field. I can't, I've got to jolt around it like so, okay? And so it jolts around like that. Now, what you'll notice at this point is that the magnetic fields, because they can't interact and they can't cross, we could draw another one if you really wanted to, right? Like you don't want to draw too many because you just get confused about what's happening. But you'll see there, there that that's what we have. Now, what you'll notice is that in this situation here, you have magnetic fields in the same direction, which is going to be repulsion. And here you have opposite fields. So fields moving to the you know counterclockwise and fields moving to the right. These ones here are, these are the ones that are um, attracting each other and those ones up there are repelling. And so what happens is this wire will therefore experience a force that is perpendicular to that field and it will move that wire. It will shift this wire a little bit towards us or in this case, down, perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. And the right-hand rule would tell us that, you know, so draw that part in, um, the magnetic, uh, the right-hand rule would tell us that you would point your fingers um, in the direction of the magnetic field, so from north to south, because that's the direction that the magnetic field is going. It's from outside, it's going from north to south, the thumb goes in, so the thumb would be pointing down, your fingers would be pointing this way. And if you did that, um, it's hard to draw this, but in this case, if I drew it up here, your fingers would go north to south, your thumb would point down. And since this is your right hand, the force is coming out towards us. And in this case, if you're looking at a top view, because your, your right hand is pointing downwards right now, this is our right hand. So it would be coming down, and that's the way that you would experience the force for this situation. Okay, so now let's see. We have another case. Now this is looking similar, except now you'll see that we have a situation where if I, the wire, the force is going, sorry, the current is coming up towards us, which means that it's moving uh, in this direction here, like so, okay? And then we, our magnetic field is still going, if this works. Here, it's still north to south, like that. Like that, okay. I can draw all the fields. And therefore, the last part says, well, if these ones are 
repel attracting, and these ones are repelling since these are opposite fields and these are the same field, then the force pointing would be in that direction. If we use our right hand rule, our fingers go north to south, our thumb points up, our palm is pointing in this direction. So it would be that's what was happening there. So again, the explanation is there is a force experienced because there are two fields interacting with each other. And the way the two fields interact will either cause the force to go in one perpendicular direction or the other perpendicular direction. But we can use this to make things like motors, speakers, um, all kinds of things. Just, I mean, the, the, it's used for a lot of things. Uh, it's, you know, do it in reverse and you've got generators. So there's a lot of really cool things that can come about from this. So what we're going to look at next is um, a tutorial on some examples of how to determine which direction the forces are acting um, or decide which side is north and south and that kind of stuff using um, the right hand rule or by drawing this little system that I have drawn here. Okay, that'll be in the next uh, video tutorial.